occur sketching using calculus to help us out and non-calculus techniques. Here's a bunch of steps we're going to go through and we're going to refer to as the podcast goes on. Um, but basically we're going to look for intercepts, asymptotes, max, min, inflection points, increase, decrease, and concavity. So let's get started with this first equation here. So I have this x to the fourth minus an x cubed type scenario with these fractional coefficients. Let's first take a look at our x-intercept, which means that the y value is 0. So I get 1 12 x to the fourth minus 2 thirds x cubed. Well, I can pull out x to the third, and I'm left with 1 12 x minus 2 thirds, and that equals 0 still, which tells me I get this equals 0, or I could have 1 12 x minus 2 thirds equals 0. Well, from this side, I can just say x is 0. And over here, I'm going to solve for x. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by 12, get rid of those fractions. And so I get x minus 24 over 3 is equal to 0. And so x equals, well, this is 8. Bring it over, I get x is equal to 8. So now I have one x-intercept and two x-intercepts. Okay, and let's add ourselves a new page, and we'll start to take a look at what this graph is going to look like. I'm going to have, let's get ourselves a grid. Mm, let's see what we can get here. Let's get an xy axis to help us out. And we'll go back to the pages and let's do in case we need it again. Okay, so I just found out that I have an x-intercept at 0 and at 8, 2, 4, 6, and at 8. So I know I'm going through these points here. Y-intercept well, the y-intercept, I'm going to let x equals 0, and when I do that, I also get y being 0, which I already knew from here. It's going through the origin. Okay, are there any asymptotes? No asymptotes, so that's good. We also know the x can be any real number, so the domain is domain is x belongs to the set of reals. The range, though, let's talk about the range a little bit later on. I'm not ready to really discuss that too clearly yet. Now, some of the things we can look at now is we can look at our minimums and maximums. To find minimums and maximums, I'm going to take the first derivative. And when I take the first derivative, I get 4 twelfths x cubed minus 2x squared, and they could potentially happen at 0. So I factor out an x squared, and the 4 twelfths is the same as 1 third. x minus 2, 0. So here I can say x squared could be 0, which means x is 0, or 1 third x minus 2 is 0. So 1 third x is equal to 2, x is equal to 6. So now these are potential maximums and minimums. Let's find out what's going on with increasing and decreasing now. So I'm going to make myself a sign chart. f prime, f, here is 0, here is 6. I know the derivative is 0. The derivative is 0 when x is 6. So, what's going on to the left-hand side? I go to my derivative. If I pick a number like negative 1, I plug it in there, I get a positive. I plug negative 1 in here, and I get a negative value. So a negative and a positive altogether is negative, which means this is the function is decreasing. Looking between 0 and 6, let's pick a value like 1. So I plug 1 in there, that's going to be positive. 
I plug one in here, and I get one third minus two is going to be a negative value. So that is still negative. So it is decreasing still. And then finally, looking at big number, so let's say 10, that's positive. That's going to be positive as well. So I get positive, positive. So altogether, it's positive. So it's going to be increasing. So it looks like this value here is indeed a minimum, where this one is neither a maximum nor a minimum. So uh, some more things to do. So if we know it's a maximum, let's actually find the value of that point. So f at 6 will be 1 12th. Oh, do I really want to do this without a calculator? Who? I go 6 to the power of 4 minus 2 thirds 6 to the power cubed. Let's do a quick calculation here. So 6 to the power of 4 times 1 divide 12 minus 2 divide 3 times 6 to the power of 3. And I end up there with minus 36. Because minus 36. So one point, I know, the minimum is at 6. So I have a minimum at 6 minus 36. Okay, let's keep on going here. I know I have some decreasing Oh, a mirror page. I have some decreasing and I have some increasing. The next thing I'm going to look at is concavity. So I'm going to take my first derivative and I'm going to take the second derivative. So f double prime x equals, well, I'll bring the 3 down. Oh, that's just going to give me mm, 12 or 1 as an x squared minus 4x. Again, I want to find points of inflection, so I'll set it equal to 0. So pull out the x. I get x minus 4. And so x equals 0, and x minus 4 is 0. So this means x equals Four. So let us scroll down a little bit. Make an assigned chart for concavity. I can double prime f. This is zero. This is four. If I have negative numbers, I plug it in here. I get a negative. A negative, so this is two negatives make a positive, which makes me concave up between zero and one. So that's positive one, let's say I get positive, negative, positive, negative, which is a negative overall, and I get concave down. So zero is a point of inflection, and similarly, if I go bigger than that, I get a positive, positive, and I get concave up again. So I know four is a point of inflection. Zero is a point of inflection. I got concavity here, and I have concavity there. Okay, let's look at what else we know about this scenario. What other things have we considered? Domain and range, we'll talk about in a moment. X and Y intercepts, we got those. There are no asymptotes. We've looked at our derivatives and second derivatives. We've got maximums and minimum points of inflections. We have no asymptotes. We're going to put these points on. And now we're going to look at the concavity. So let's actually find some values for these points. So now I know my key points. I got f at 0, which is an intercept, which is 0. f at 4. Well, if I plug 1 12th, 4 to the power of 4 minus 2 thirds, 4 to the power of 3. And let's see if I can go to my scenario here and I'll change that 6 to a 4. I'll change this one to a 4. 
and I get 21 and a third. So that is approximately 21.3. Is that positive or negative? A negative. So I know where my point of reflection is. I know where my minimum is. I think we're getting, and we know concavity. So it's doing a lot, concavity, increasing and decreasing. So it looks like it's going to do something. It's decreasing, 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 point of inflection, change in concavity, decrease and then increase in this kind of scenario here. So let us, we got to go down to negative 36. We have a point of inflection. at uh, 4 comma negative 21.3. So if I do these, let's say by 5, so 5, 10, 15, 20. So here is 4. There's my point of inflection. There's 20, 25, 30. Here's 35. So here, down here, is going to be my minimum, right around here. So I have to be decreasing, 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 point of inflection, so I'm changing concavity, changing concavity, and then changing it again. It's hard to show that. But then and back up again, like such. Okay, so that's what my graph should look like, where this is a horizontal tangent line, which doesn't look very good. Let's see how I did. We look at our grapher we can go 1 divide 12 x to the power of 4 minus 2 divide 3 x to the power of 3. Try that. Now if I change my window it looks at 8 and if I actually go down here it looks like I'm going to have what I want. Zoom it out a little bit more. Indeed, there's down to 36, point of inflection. There's my graph.